So here we are, part two, of the Communist Manifesto. And uh, we'll continue here. We, the last thing we left off with was um, the Communists want to destroy the most hallowed of relationships when they replace home education by social. Again, that's public education, government schools. Uh, by law, you're forced to send your children to school, to public schools. You have no choice unless you want to homeschool them. And, of course, they're moving to try to do away with that because the schools and the government, don't, don't, they don't like competition. Uh, and also keeping in mind the reason why the communists wanted to have government education mandatory is because it reaches a point where the government will determine what the curriculum is. Not the parents, the government will determine the curriculum. And so, therefore, they can indoctrinate their children with the ideas that the government and their agents feel that uh, they should be indoctrinated with. Uh, that's why the government has in the courts and so forth have taken prayer out of the schools. They say that it's no longer proper for a teacher to say this is morally wrong, that's morally right. And you can't have the Ten Commandments in school, you can't have the Bible in school. And of course, having these things in school would create a moral force that would help to bring order and harmony uh, to the schools and the children would have a sense of what right and wrong is. But uh, that's the reason why they did away with religious influences in the schools. So it makes paves the way for uh, a humanist philosophy which teaches that there are no absolutes, there's really no right and wrong. That's for you to decide. To tell the children that, uh, well, we can't tell you what's right and wrong, we leave that up to you. And of course, when you have a spiritual moral vacuum like that, then you have the problems that we have in the schools today. Um, then you go on. <clears throat> And matter of fact, Karl Marx refers to uh, the hollow relationship between parents and children to be disgusting. And the communists are further reproached with the desire to abolish countries and nationalities. That's got to do with world government, the elimination of independence and sovereignty. Uh, our country has lost a lot of its independence and sovereignty by joining the United Nations and uh, by way of treaties, uh, joining international organizations like the World Bank, International Monetary Fund, and so forth. So we've lost a lot of our independence. Our troops fighting overseas are fighting under UN command, not American command. These are UN wars, not American wars. Then we go on. Uh, there are besides, now this is really bold, there are besides eternal truths such as freedom, justice, etc. that are common to all states of society. But communism abolishes eternal truths. It abolishes all religion and all morality instead of constituting them on a new basis. It therefore acts in contradiction to all past historical experience. There's a word for this, it's called humanism. Like I said before, there are no absolutes, there is no right and wrong, and that's why Hitler and the Nazis could pass a law and send the Jews, six million of them, to the gas chambers, because uh, there was no moral law that said that they couldn't do it, because everything is relative. Then it went on, it goes on, the communist revolution is the most radical rupture with traditional relations. No wonder that its development involves the most radical rupture with traditional ideas. So, we used to have in this country, in some ways we still do, the tradition of the, of the uh, traditional family, uh, a man and a woman are the parents, and um, uh, uh, we had a Christian foundation, Judeo-Christian foundation, and our institutions, our laws, were based on the laws and commandments of God, like the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament and so forth in Deuteronomy. And um, there are a lot of uh, traditions that we had that were developed over the last 2,000 years of the development of Western civilization. But now the communists are getting great control of our country, our institutions, from, by infiltrating them and taking control of them from within. They have destroyed a lot of our traditions and culture. And I'm 68 years old, and I remember when uh, there was a certain way of doing things. Everybody had a common belief. and that the Bible is true, that there is a God, Jesus is the Christ, uh, that the kids were brought up concerning being moral and, and, and uh, decent and so forth. But that's all pretty much been destroyed. So they destroy our traditions, and by doing that, our moral Judeo-Christian traditions and foundations, it makes the country very weak, and our institutions become weak, and everything starts to fall apart, you start to have anarchy, and that's what we're beginning to see. Then it goes on, um, the communist... Yeah, I already read that one. We have seen above that the first step in the revolution of the working class, meaning the communists, is to raise the proletariat, that, that is the communists and their followers, that's what it means, to the position of the ruling class. 
So, so they want to take complete control of our institutions and our government. And then it says he'll win the battle of democracy. We are no longer, in essence, a constitutional republic as was set up by the founding fathers. We have become a democracy. We have direct rule by the people. And they're pretty much manipulated by the, by the demagogues, politicians, congressmen, senators, presidents, and so forth. And they pass laws that are such that they claim is good for the whole, for the community, for the majority, but in effect destroy the rights of the individual and the minority. Uh, so in other words, if the majority says that, uh, well, we're not going to allow Mormons or we're not going to allow Jews to own property anymore, the majority has voted for that, that's the law. So the individual and the minority, they lose their rights. And that's what we're seeing. Then it goes on, uh, of course, in the beginning, this cannot be, oh, excuse me, the proletariat we use, that is the communists and their followers, is political supremacy to wrest by degrees all capital from the bourgeoisie, to centralize all instruments of production in the hands of the state. So that is direct ownership, like for example there are certain things like uh, some of the railroads are owned by the government, uh, the, then you have uh, the schools owned by the government. Um, also, another way to control and eliminate private property in, in degrees, you know, as it says here, uh, let's say, yeah, let me see, uh, just by the inroads on the rights of property, you do that mostly by government regulation controls, licenses, permits, as we, we were saying earlier. Uh, and then it goes on, <clears throat> of course, uh, this means the movement, move, movement to outstrip themselves necessitates further inroads upon the old social order and are unavoidable as a means of entirely revolutionizing the mode of production. So, necessitates further inroads on the old social order. That is, uh, our, our country and its institutions are no longer the way they were, say, 50 years ago. It's not the same country that I remember. And, um, the social mores, the moral character of the people has changed. Uh, we have abortion, homosexuality, uh, encouragement of premarital sex, um, uh, filthy, dirty movies, um, uh, uh, a lot of videos, a lot of literature that the kids are getting a hold of, and the so-called music. And all of this has corrupted the minds of the people and uh, therefore has, has brought about a spiritual decline and... Uh, destruction of, a, of the morals of the people. And of course, uh, the communists realize that if you destroy the moral base of a society by destroying its religious institutions, then the country will fall apart. It's kind of like the spiritual strength of a people or a nation. It's kind of like a brick building. And the cement between the bricks is the spiritual strength that holds the bricks together. But when the cement starts to fall apart and decay, then the bricks start falling out. And that's where our country is right now. The bricks are starting to fall out of the building. And it goes on. Uh, there are ten, there's a ten point plank in the Communist Manifesto. And Karl Marx said if these points could be instituted within a particular nation, they can take complete control of that country. And as I read them, you'll see that we already have them. Abolition of private property and land. The government owns a lot of land. They control the rest. Uh, Heavy progressive or graduated income tax, we have that. Abolition of all rights of inheritance, we have all these inheritance taxes. Confiscation of the property of all immigrants and rebels. Uh, people are trying to pass laws saying that people cannot take their wealth out of the country, and many are trying to do that because they see where we're starting to collapse. Uh, centralization of credit in the hands of a central bank, that's the Federal Reserve. Uh, centralization of means of communication, transport in the state, and it goes on. Free education for all children, public schools. Uh, so, um, so what we have to do is to understand what socialism is and get back to where the government protects the individual in his life, his liberty, and his property, and uh, the individual is supreme, not the group or the state. Our rights come from God, not the state or the group. Thank you.